Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of work with some linear regression. Uh, I've generated a set of five data points here with uh, X's and Y's. Now I've set up my table here to include X squareds, the product of X and Y, then the Y here refers to the Y, uh, the measured Y value, so YI if you like, then uh, the A plus B times XI, that would be the predicted Y value. So effectively this is a residual. Uh, I might even just write that above there as a reminder. And then the one behind, beside it here is a residual squared. Alright, so let's get into this. Now we've got the following lovely formulas here uh, for a set of N data points. So that's us, N equals 5. We have paired uh, values from um, X's and Y's, and we're looking for a linear regression Y equals A plus B X. Now there's a formula for A here, the formula for B, then the uncertainty in A, so sigma A is given by this, sigma B is given by this, and we've got these funny symbols delta here and sigma Y, those are just little shorthands for these parts of the formulas here. Uh, all of these formulas came from uh, Taylor's book, An Introduction to Error Analysis, which is one of the books that I had, I actually think I had the first edition of that which was published way back in the early 80s or beyond, earlier than that even. So anyway, um, that just shows how old I am. Now, let's get about calculating these things. So uh, obviously I just need to go that value there to the power of 2, then I need to go for this one, the value stored here, multiplied by this one, Cross to this one for the residual. I can't quite do that yet until I've calculated my value of A and B. A and B are required to predict the Y value. So let's uh, just slide these ones down here. Wonderful. Now these are the sums. Pretty sure you understand how to do the sum of a list of numbers. So rather than just typing 5 there, I put a count function and highlighted just, just those cells. Now of course, you know, <laughs> big deal, you could have just written 5, not a problem. So delta, well delta is given over here, so I'm going to have to go, if I refer, the delta equals n, oh, well, that's that bit, multiplied by sum of the x squared is stored in that cell, then subtract, and this is, be careful here, it's the sum of the x's, so it's the number 15, which is then squared. So delta is 50, hooray. Um, I think these ones up here only rely on delta, so I'll go ahead and do those ones now. The value of A is given by this lovely formula. So here we are. I'll set this up so that the numerator has brackets. Sigma of the x squared, the sum of the x squared is that, multiplied by the sum of the y's is there then I need to subtract the sum of the x's, that one, multiplied by the sum of the products x and y, that's that one, close the brackets, that's my numerator, divide by, oh divide by delta, how convenient, I just have to divide by delta by clicking this. That gives me a predicted y-intercept, remember in our regression equation a is the intercept, b is the slope, um, a predicted intercept of 8.1. Let's do the gradient next. Gradient is given by, here we go, once again open some brackets, n multiplied by the sum of the x's multiplied by the y's, subtract, this time I have sigma x multiplied by sigma y. Close the brackets on my numerator and you guessed it, divide by delta. There we have it. I have a gradient of 2. I wonder if that's rounded off or whether there's some more decimals. Nope, that's not rounded. Though well, at least to the second decimal it's not. So now I've got my intercept and my gradient. But what I'm really interested in is the uncertainties in these, sigma A and sigma B. Well, in order to do that I need these formulas here and here. Sigma, uh, both of these rely on a value or a term called sigma Y. And sigma Y is given by this. So let's go back up now that we've got these and we'll calculate, that's, this is where my residuals come into it. So I'll calculate my residuals. 
Well, uh, the y at the front represents the measured y value. Subtract bracket a. Now I'll need an absolute reference on that one because I'll be copying the formula in a minute. Plus b absolute reference multiplied by the ith x value, so in this case it's the first x value, no absolute reference there, close the bracket and enter. That gives me my residual, that tells me that this measured y value of 10.5 is 0.4 units higher than where the trend line would be. So I'll copy them down and not surprisingly the residual sum is zero because if we have a regression line doing its job there will be an equal number of data points above and below so that's that's a good sign there now let's do the residuals that's all of that stuff is just the same thing squared residual squared and we'll copy these ones now I've by copying there it's messed up my formatting a little bit so very annoying. Let's uh, put those nice little borders in again. That's good. So now I'm ready to come down here and calculate sigma y. This is a bit of a monster. I need, oh, I don't need two equal signs, but I do need a square root function. So that's it. And the top of the square root function is literally the sum of the squared residuals. So it's, it's that number sitting right there. That's all it is. Divide by n minus 2. I'll need some brackets for the denominator this time. There's n minus 2. That's the denominator brackets. That's the bracket for the square root function. There's my value of sigma y. Now it shouldn't be long before we finish this. We need for this one, we need sigma y, that's the number we just had, multiplied by, oh we have another square root function, sqrt, and what's inside this? It's sigma x squared, that's that number, over, but well, there's delta again. Delta's very popular amongst these, so uh, I have an uncertainty of 0.663. That's probably more decimals than I'm justified in keeping there. Now let's do the uncertainty in this one. Delta, a uh, sigma b, well, sigma y, there we go, multiplied by the square root of, what do we got, n over delta. Here's n divided by delta. And we'll close the bracket, and we have an uncertainty of 0 0.2. Isn't that wonderful? Now, just, uh, just let's put that across the side a bit to give myself some room. I just want to do something to check that this is all not just made up. Um, I want to highlight those and I want to insert a scatter graph. There it is. Beautiful little scatter graph. Uh, I can add a trend line to these, I think. How do we go down here for, let's have a trend line. And we can even ask it to, Excel will give us and here, oh, I didn't want to do that. It will give us the equation on the chart. Isn't that magnificent? So did we get the same? Well, I hope we did. Yes, we did. We got a gradient of 2. B was 2. We got an intercept of 8.1. We got that. Now, there's even a way, and you're going to hate me when I show you this because it's so much easier. There is even a way of calculating the uncertainties automatically as well. I know I did all that to explain the process and show you where the formulas, but here's what we do. Um, it's a matrix calculation, so we need or an array formula. So we highlight, um, in this case, four cells, and we the function is called line EST or line ST statistics of lines. Open the brackets. It wants the y, the known y coordinates. There they are. It wants the known x coordinates. There's those ones. Now this constant, uh, we do not want to set the, they think b is the intercept in Excel land, we in Excel, but we don't want to set the intercept to zero. So I will put a one there to indicate truth. True means calculate b normally. And this one, I want true, return additional statistics, close the bracket. Now here's the important bit, 
I need to press and hold control and shift. I'm doing that now. And now I'm pressing enter. Look at all those lovely numbers that just appeared. Now the first number is the gradient and the uncertainty in the gradient is 0.2. The next number is the intercept and the uncertainty in the intercept. Look at that. Excel calculated the same things we did. So you could do it the long way. It's fun. You could do it the quick way with line EST. And don't forget, there's good solid mathematics behind all of this. And I would really recommend looking up this reference. If you Google it, I'm sure you'll probably find a pirate copy there somewhere that you can read. Uh, but don't tell anybody I said that. Okay, thanks very much. Um, enjoy.